Hey, John Figures, it's Sydney at the world premiere of The Gutter at South by Southwest. Uh, me and my brother used to bowl all the time when we had zero money, and uh, we might go back to that after this if this movie does bad, because we might have zero money. Um, but uh, we went all the time, and we noticed how many different kinds of people were in a bowling alley. Like, uh, like uh, there would be a birthday party, and then there would be like people on like a double date, and then there would be like bikers and gang members as well. And we were like, this place is like this place is crazy, you know. And so we thought like. What if we made a movie with all these different kind of people and they had like they, were, they didn't go home after they bowled like they were around each other all the time like what kind of madness would happen and that kind of inspired Yasser to write the movie. Uh, I play Walt Licker. Um, you know Walt's figuring it out and as he figures it out he finds friends along the way. He figures out he knows how to bowl and uh, he becomes a competitive bowler in a space where you know it's not a lot of I guess professional black bowlers so <laughs> um, and then I just it just gets crazy it's just you know it's off off beat you know like you know it's just different pace different tempo it's like a different uh, frequency so getting into that was nice and uh, it allowed me to peel back these layers you know what I mean and let loose have some fun yeah, so my role, uh, I'm a nemesis in this film, you know, as uh, Shmeek's character is going through uh, the world of bowling, facing tougher and tougher competition. I think I'm one of the earlier uh, tough people that he has to get through. And I have very lubricated hands because I love my moisturizer. I play Skunk. Um, chosen name, not birth name. Um, I am, Skunk is like a real mess. She's really not got her life together it's she's made a mess of her life she's a drunk she's sort of just um everything's everything's like falling apart and she finds walt played by shamik moore i don't think he's here yet and uh and and sort of sees something in him that she used to see in herself so she tries to you know she has a heart of gold she's a mess with a heart of gold this role and this movie were unlike anything i've ever read or seen which is what was so fun about it it was a very specific, unique sense of humor. And the fact that the guys who wrote it are going to be directing it made me feel like, okay, these guys know what they're doing. This is going to be, well, they're taking a full swing. We'll see if it works. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking forward. Um, but, you know, the problem with People, which, which premiered here, was such a, um, a, a labor of love. And I wrote it and produced it and started it which is great, and something like this, it's so fun to actually not have any of those concerns and just say, it's this, it's their sandbox and I'm just gonna go play in it. So uh, it was a great relief and it was right afterwards. We shot this right after I came back from Ireland, so I was happy to play and let somebody else be in charge. Uh, probably this character I played when I was younger on Cartoon Network, The Incredible Crew. <laughs> this is like a evolved version of, of the, what I was doing in that sketch comedy, so. You know, it's funny because when uh, Yasser and Isaiah called me to do the film, I was all in, and I wanted to make sure that I at least watched some bowling. I actually Weber, came to that, South by Southwest guy, years Weber? ago and the watched ghost? this um, documentary about, like, uh, um, this about bowlers, I and I always thought about that, and I always remember there was a hilarious guy who, when he would uh, bowl a strike, and he would kind of like, like laughing, chop at his like, crotch. So uh, I definitely took that as part of my inspiration. Have you ever seen, well, this isn't even gonna make sense. It's not gonna make sense, but I'll just tell you. Shall I? Okay. When, when, when I met with Yasser and Isaiah, we, um, I read the script and I like loved it so much, and I didn't think it was right for me, or I didn't think I was right for it, but I really wanted to meet them just because I loved it so much. I wanted to just say, I love the script, good job. But then we just started talking and talking and talking, and they were talking about one, that they love Paul Thomas Anderson, and that one of their favorite movies is Punch Drunk Love, and that there's something about Punch Drunk Love that resonated with them in this movie. And we were Zooming, and I have a framed picture of Adam Sandler in Punch Drunk Love, a painting actually, and I, it was right off camera, so just in the Zoom, I went like this to the Barry Egan character. So the, basically, our inspiration was sort of Barry in a way, not Barry Egan. It, Adam Sandler, blah, 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 but it, which doesn't exactly make sense when you see it, but to us it was like a, a bit of a North Star. When things were getting crazy, we would we would focus on that. I didn't care for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you know, a lot of guys say, oh, I love my co-stars. Didn't care for them. I found them to be humorless and talentless. <laughs> no, that was you know, part of the appeal. <laughs> They're so great. And I had not worked with any, but uh, of course I knew Susan Sarandon's, you know, legend. Uh, and, and I knew Darcy's work. I never worked with her. And Shamik is really different and, and special, talented guy. So it was great fun. And the brothers, you know, it's also fun when you it was fun to watch them work as partners and as brothers. It's like they sort of finished each other's sentences. And it's like it was very, it felt very familial, and very family-ish to be on the set. So it was great fun. Um, you know, it's intimidating and it's entirely comfortable because they make it comfortable, if that makes sense. Like, again, Darcy is, uh, I've known Darcy just for a little bit. A lot of the cast I knew because they were just like friends and, 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 you know, family to an extent. But, you know, you're on set with like Paul Reiser and Susan Sarandon. You're like, eh. And like, there's so many times we, you know, would go in to give like Susan a note. Like, hey, we're thinking this. And she's like, well, actually, and she would turn it on its head. And then we'd film it and we were like, okay, that was really good. She's really smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she just... She knows what she's doing in a way that's like kind of scary, <laughs> you know. She's phenomenal. Paul is phenomenal. There's just nothing that you can throw at them that a they won't deliver on, but just I mean, blow the roof off of it and make it ten times better than anything you could even imagine. They're they're awesome. So it was intimidating at points, especially day one where you're kind of like, uh, hello, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and then after that, it was just, uh, it was truly just people hanging out and just trying to make the funniest thing possible. Well, I think every moment on set is special with yeah, is. Isaiah I mean, and Yasser because well. they are such no, fans of comedy. They are also so funny yes. and they have no ego. They're just sort of like, they have amazing yes, ideas. Right. Then whatever you bring to it, they just add to it. So it's one of those fun experiences of just working with like great, talented people. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I think that like the, the better the talent, the easier your job is. And that was definitely the case with all these people. And I think that um, the, my favorite part about it was that they are, as a se as seasoned and accomplished as they are, they took direction and they, they listened and we collaborated. There was no egos. Um, and it was a treat. I mean, everyone was so sweet and cool. And it was, it was a real, real great. Oh, Susan's here. Uh, I was like, what was that loud noise? Susan's here. Um, uh, it was just a great opportunity, and I, me and my brother were like, who do we want to work with? Who have we always thought about working with? And this is the cast we ended up with, and we couldn't be happier with that. It was just a joy every day. I mean, I really, like, God, I love, in the, by the way, this cast that you see today is, I mean, they're icons and amazing and wonderful, and every scene, ha this is a huge cast. There are so many people in this movie, and every day it was, and, and Yasser and Isaiah know all these funny comedians that I didn't know, and so every day it would be like a new legend, and it was, um, it was an honor, honestly. It was like an honor. Um, I would say the improvising, ridiculous. Like, when Susan gets her cigarette, she's a whole new person, so I think just being with the cast and the crew, just really kind of put it all together. Uh, I think visually, mostly like me and Yasser are big fans of Paul Thomas Anderson, and we reference actually like you wouldn't think so in like a straight up comedy like we, we had, but our goal was to make a cinematic comedy. And we uh, drew a lot of inspiration from Boogie Nights when we when we filmed it. A lot of browns, a lot of oranges, long dolly shots, zooms, stuff like that. Um, so I would say Paul Thomas Anderson and Boogie Nights was a big inspiration for us. A big part of it was breaking down all the bowling sections and figuring out how dynamic we could shoot it. We actually put steel deck on the lanes with a dolly, and then we could kind of push in and pull out, and then we kind of use steady cam. But each scene in each city, we tried to switch up our design. So it was never repeating the same thing over and over. I do. I was a student. I went to Vancouver Film School. Um, I was a film student. I would say that, you know, weed out people who are not serious about making it. There are going to be people who are like, hey, I want to do stuff that are just going to waste your time. And just know that you're going to have to work really, really, really hard. And there's like, I, I, I know this is like a LeBron James, LeBron James quote, but there is no magic potion for it. You have to work really hard. And um, just keep your head up. Uh, 
by working really hard and staying around and weeding out those people, you eventually rise to the position you want to be in because a lot of that stuff is out of the way. So just keep pushing hard. Try to be creative. Um, try to do new things. Don't get down on yourself. It's going to be hard. Um, that's my advice. Keep your head up. Um, keep your head up. Focus on you. Internal work is required for for extension to exceed expectations because um, that's my motto. I will exceed all expectations, especially my own. Therapy for all artists and creatives. Know yourself so you can play whatever, you can create whatever you want. Yeah, you know, to me, I always say, like, work with people who get you. Have fun with that, like, and, don't, and just make stuff. Don't worry about, like, oh, yes, making absolutely. it. Hi, just I'm make it. I am the co-director. Okay. Have patience. If you don't like it, that's okay. You can. It's not a failure. It's you can. If you don't like it, get out. If you love it, keep doing it and have patience. It can take a long, long time, but there's so many amazing ways to be fulfilled as an artist, director, writer, anything. In the meantime, I do, and it's uh, if you have a phone, uh, a Canon, whatever. Like, truly, just make the thing. It will suck. But just make it. And then you can see everything that's wrong with it. And then you can go do it again. We made a short film of this years ago. And everyone was like, this is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. Like, throw it in the ocean. And I was like, okay. And then my wife, to her credit, like, a few years later was like, just write it as a script. Like, people just didn't get what it was within this, like, two minutes. Just do it again. And so... That really like opened the doors for everything. So again, all credit to her. And again, if people don't like a thing, you you have to like be aware of like if something sucks versus like this is a good idea not executed well. But also, if you have the passion for it, just do it. Like yeah, like I, I promise, there's no wrong way to do something because you will always learn. Honestly, go make work that you love. I feel like if you can really put a hundred percent into it it's a game changer because I always hate if I'm just doing something for the money it just never sits as well as if I'm doing it for the love is this is this a hookup? Yeah, hook okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't you. tell which one is Satan. if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe seems like all